Ever since creating a tutorial on how to combine meshes, I've been getting requests to talk about how to combine meshes with multiple materials. Uh, we're going to do that today. I'm going to teach you how to do it. If you don't know what a combine instance is, you're going to need to go and watch the previous episode. I've got a link down below. You will not understand this episode if you do not understand combine instances. Right, this is where we left off. We've got these two meshes over here, and we've got this one mesh over here, but these guys have different materials, and this is just one material. <gasps> oh no, how do we fix that? Well, let's look at our code and see if we can find a clue. Here's our basic merge. Now, I've simplified this from what it was in the last episode. There's no world coordinates or anything like that, because I just want to teach you about submeshes specifically. So, basic merge. Get us, the parent, get our mesh and clear it out, because we're going to be merging everything into one mesh, and that would be our parent mesh. Get all of the filters in our children, and create a combined instance for each of our filters. Just like we did last time. Skip ourselves, so we don't want to create a combined instance, merging the parent into the parent. That sounds like a disaster waiting to happen. And then we just merge it together. Easy as pie. What's this? This was not there last time. That's that's new. What is that? What is that? Merge submeshes. Well, defaults to true. And so we've been always defaulting it to true. What happens if we default it to false? My, my. Is this good? Is this what we need? Mm. No. Oh, it's not merging into one material now. What's going on? Okay. Meshes don't understand the concept of a material. If you look, the mesh is up here in the mesh filter, and the materials are down here in the mesh renderer. There's no no correlation. You can't you can't magically understand what material has which mesh and vice versa. We have to do that manually. That's a shame. Because it would be really nice if there was an easy function to do it. There probably are plenty of libraries that can do it. Uh, I, I imagine if you looked online, you could find ten of them. But I'm here to teach you how to do it, so that's what I'm going to do. We're going to have to manually link up each mesh to each specific material. Ooh. In addition, we've got this other problem. This guy has two materials attached. So he's got multiple submeshes, one submesh per material, right? And if we hit basic, oh no, well, let's add in the other three. I think we're just short of material. Yeah, there we are. It's not the whole shebang. Look, look, didn't, didn't get you everything. That's because we've always been specifying submesh zero. See, submesh zero. So it's only grabbing the first submesh. What the heck is a submesh? Well, for our purposes, a submesh is a material. Now, that's not always true. There are some complicated situations, but if you're in one of those complicated situations, you can probably handle this at least as well as I can, so you don't need me. But for our purposes, a submesh is a material. Submesh zero, material zero. Submesh one, material one. Submesh two, material two. Pretty straightforward. So what we need to do is mix and match all of these submeshes. We need to take all of the submeshes in our children and make sure we understand which materials they have and we need to put them all in the correct submesh on the parent mesh when we finish it up. So our parent mesh is going to have, you know, three submeshes if we have three materials in our children or two submeshes if we have two materials in our children. Okay, well how are we going to do that? when the meshes don't understand what uh, each sort of uh, material is being applied and so on and so forth. Well, that's actually the easy part. The hard part, or the annoying part, is that this is binary. We can't say mesh combiner 1 and mesh combiner 4 have the same material, so put them in the same sub-mesh. We just can't. It's either flatten all of the meshes down into a single mesh, or flatten each mesh down into a sub-mesh on our new mesh. So. When we are doing this combiner, it's either all flat or not flat. There's no way to kind of pick and choose. So what we need to do is we need to run one of these operations per material to create a mesh with zero submeshes for each material. And then we need to take each of those meshes, each one of which represents a material, 
and push them together into a mesh where they are sub-meshes. I hope I didn't lose you there. If I did, rewind and listen to it a couple more times. We need to take all our final mesh needs to have a sub-mesh for each of our materials. And in order to do that, we're going to need to take and create a mesh for each of our materials and then turn them into sub-meshes. Right. Here's that function. Does it work? Well, of course it works. I wouldn't have shown it to you if it didn't work. Boom. There we are. So uh, how does this work? Well, advanced merge is the name of the function. So get all of our children and us. This is the mesh filters. Now, this is not an optimized function. There are lots of places you can optimize it. And in fact, it's missing some functionality you'll probably need. But I wanted to teach you the concepts. Uh, I will have a link to this code somewhere, uh, but it's not going to be... Uh, I mean, you can try and use it as is, but I kind of recommend you understand what's going on. So after getting all of the mesh filters, we also need all of the materials, but we just need a big list. So if we've got three materials, we're going to need to know that we have three. Even if there's 18 sub-objects, if they only have three materials between them, we just need a list of all of the materials. So here it is. We make that list by finding all of the mesh renderers because the mesh filters don't know what a material is. The mesh renderers do. So we, we fetch each of the mesh renderers and then we skip ourselves because we don't care about our materials. And then we get a list of all of the materials on that renderer and we check and see whether or not they're in our list. And if they're not in our list, we add them. Basic stuff, right? Find everything that can have materials in it. Look at each material and if it's not in the list, add it. And you'll come out with two materials, three materials, eight materials, however many materials you've got. Keep in mind that shared materials is what you're going to want to use in almost every situation unless you're creating customized materials on the fly. And if you're doing that, be super careful that you don't end up with like eight instances of the same material because then they won't match up and they'll count as eight different materials. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and create a mesh for each of our materials. Now we're going to call these submeshes. They're not submeshes yet, but we're going to turn them into submeshes. So these are meshes, and we're going to create one for each material, right? No problem. In order to do that, we're going to need to create a list of combine instances. And then we're going to need to go through all of our children, and we're going to need to figure out whether or not any of the submeshes on our children are using the same material as the material we're currently trying to find. So. You have to get the mesh renderer because the mesh renderer knows what the heck materials are. Once you've got the mesh renderer, you get a list of the materials and you look through those materials. And if it's not the material we're looking for, ignore it for now. Now, this is very, very um, spammy. It takes, a lot of, it takes a lot of extra processing to do it like this. But the idea is pretty clear. We know how many materials we've got. We have a list, each material. And we're just going to go through one by one and find every submesh on all of our children that happens to be referencing that material. Okay? So if we've got eight red objects, because one of our materials is red, then we're going to be finding those eight objects. And if we've got a ninth object that's half red and half blue, we're going to be finding the red half of that object. Okay? We can create a combined instance for it. Set up the mesh, set up the submesh as the material index, i.e. if it's red and blue, we choose the red submesh or we choose the blue submesh, but not both. Hope that's clear because each material is a submesh for us. So material one, submesh one, material zero, submesh zero. Anyway, add that to the stack and then after you've gone through all of our various, uh, all of our various children, and gotten a list of all of the submeshes that need to be combined for our material, combined it into our material. Now keep, uh, keep in mind that we are flattening this. So all of these things share a single material. We don't need submeshes. Just grab them all and slap them down into a single submesh. Uh, if you're using very large meshes and you have more verts than is technically allowed in a single submesh, this is not going to work right. You're going to end up with extra meshes, so be careful about that. But otherwise, it'll work fine. So now we have a mesh, and our mesh has one submesh. It is just a single flat mesh, and it is associated with a single material, like red. All right, so now we've finished with the red material. 
let's move on to the blue material. Let's move on to the copper, the glass, the skin, the cloth, whatever it happens to be. Just go through each material and do the same process. And at the end, we'll have a mesh for each of our materials. Down here, we create the final combiners. For each one of our material meshes, we're gonna combine it into the final mesh. But this one we don't flatten because each of those materials is a submesh. Material one, submesh one, material zero, submesh zero. That's it. So does this work? Yeah, it works pretty well. So right now we've got materials zero or material one, two, and three on this. But if we were to take away material three, it would leave us with only two materials. So if we were to look at this mesh here, three sub meshes, right? 2400 verts, three sub meshes. Let's recompile it. And now if we were to look at it, 2400 verts, two sub meshes one for each material. Now, one of the problems with this approach is that I don't currently sync up the materials on the children to the materials on the parent. So as you could notice, the material colors kind of switched around. Uh, uh, these are things that you're going to have to try and figure out on your own. Um, implementing this kind of stuff is, uh, is what separates programmers from, you know, people who just copy uh, libraries and hope for the best. It's not a very hard thing to do, uh, but it is something that you're going to want to learn how to do. And to give you a hint, it's very, very obvious because you already have a list of the materials in a specific order that matches the submeshes that you're listing. Mm. There are a lot of other things that you'll want to do, uh, like, for example, using a proper matrix instead of matrix for identity. Um, but I'll leave that to you. If you didn't understand this, please comment below because I'm making this specifically for people who have questions about how this works. Uh, I hope it's been super clear. If not, sorry, I'll try again if, uh, if enough people ask. <laughs> and uh, of course, you're free to just go ahead and grab a library instead if you prefer to do it uh, without understanding it too much. <laughs>